Hey, it's Karnak, uh, Star Wars Armada Explained. Today we're going to look at a yellow objective. We're going to look at Hyperspace Assault. I had a few requests for this card, so I said I'd do them. Uh, so this card has got a lot of text, so bear with me. It also has a few clarifications. It's kind of a lot to dive in. I'm hoping to cover as many interactions as feasible. Um, but let's read the card. So for the objective, this is after you've determined the initiative for whoever is first or second player. Um, it's before you deploy objectives or any or obstacles or anything else because you need to know you know what objective you're going to be playing. In this situation, the first player has chosen the second player's objective, Hyperspace Assault. It reads, for setup, before deploying fleets, the second player sets aside one of his small or medium ships and up to three of his squadrons. He does not deploy them during setup. Then he places three objective tokens in the play area beyond distance three of both players' edges. So when is, what is the timing of this? We'll get into the special rules in a second. So the timing of this for the setup is you don't put the tokens down first, okay? Because this is before, when it says before deploying fleet. So when is that? So after you've chosen your objective, you then put down all of the obstacles on the board you know, wherever they're going to end up being placed by the players, you know, make sure in this instance that they're, you know, not within distance one of each other. Okay, all of the obstacles have been placed. Now, this is before fleet deployment has started. The second player then decides, and he doesn't have to decide to put anything in hyperspace if he doesn't want to, but you can decide to put uh, one of your smaller medium ships and up to three of his squadrons. So if you don't deploy any ships, you can't deploy deploy any squadrons into hyperspace. Um, some people uh, sometimes find that a little confusing. Sometimes they try to just put squadrons in hyperspace. That's not, you can't do that because the, the thing is there, you choose a ship and you can have three squadrons. It's not and or. Okay, so in this situation, we're going to say, you know what? He's going to put the CR-90 in the hyperspace. So that's CR-90 and none of its upgrade cards has any effect um, on the rest of the board state while it is in hyperspace. So he's declared the ship. Uh, if he had squadron, he, he would declare, declare any squadrons. Now he needs to set out the objective tokens into the play area. We're going to say the second player here is on the bottom. So, you know, probably a good idea to place these objective tokens uh, closer to the first player's ship. You know, it's a, bit, uh, a great advantage of this card is you potentially can drop some ships behind an enemy fleet where they can then start dealing some damage. Um, and you need to place these beyond distance three. So the first line here from the top is distance three. That's one to three right there. Uh, the second line right here is one to five. Um, so we're going to go ahead. We're going to put a token there, put a token there, and put a token there. Okay. Now what's the special rule? How do these tokens work? So then you read, at the start of any round after the first round, the second player can deploy the ship and squadrons that he set aside at distance one of one objective token. Then remove all objective tokens. The ship can be deployed overlapping squadrons. The first player places those squadrons as though the ship had overlapped them while executing a maneuver. If the second player does not deploy, he may move each objective token to within distance one of its current position. So, the uh, rule here, so the first round you cannot deploy your ship from hyperspace. But any round after the first round you can. Also keep in mind that this starts um, uh, after, it starts only the second round. So a lot of people at the end of the first round will move the tokens within distance one. Because they're like, oh, I can move it because I didn't use a ship at a hyperspace. So, well, no, you can't move them at the start at the first round period because again the text in the wording says after the first round okay so it's from the second round onwards you can choose to, to plop a ship out of hyperspace or at the end of so that's the start of the round uh, if you choose not to put any ship out then at the end of each round then you can move those objective tokens so essentially the very first round you can't deploy any ship out of hyperspace and you can't move any tokens so then Let's go ahead and flip the ship around. So we're going to say it's the start of the second round. So the player is going to say, you know what? I want to drop my ship out of hyperspace now. 
and it's at distance one. What's at distance one? So within is anything within distance one, the complete black circle. At is you just only need to be barely touching that. You're at distance one, that's within distance one. So at is this, and it can be you know, a corner, it can be a back piece, you could have as much of the ship in there as you want, but as long as you've got just a tiny little chunk of your ship, at that at of the token, that is more than sufficient for what is required for the card. Um, and that is, for all intents and purposes, once you then have chosen your speed for the ship coming out of hyperspace, if it's dropped on any squadrons, you move those squadrons out of the way, the player that um, had his squadrons overlapped, he places them, or the squadrons that overlap, the other player gets to place them around the ship as he desires, and then you delete the hyperspace tokens. They are no longer necessary for the purpose of, the, of this objective. And that, in a nutshell, is hyperspace assault. Now, <laughs> let's get into some nuances and some technicalities. Um, and again, too, when you do place that ship down, remember that when you put the squadrons down, those squadrons still also need to be within or at distance one of the objective token. It's not you put the ship down and then you put the squadrons down, you know, further out of the range of the token. That's not how that works. It all has to be at, at distance one of that token. Okay. So let's go ahead and back up. And we'll, I want to flip the ship back around. There we go. So, what are some specific things that interact with this card? And there's quite a few. And it, I don't think it's everything, but it's, it's a vast chunk of what you're going to come across. So, let's start f uh, with interdictor cards, the experimental retrofit cards. Like Grav Shift Reroute and G7X Gravwell Projector. So, notice the timing on these cards says before deploying fleets is when you place down the tokens for these cards. So if you're using Hyperspace Assault, because an interdictor is a medium-sized ship, okay, and if you're first or second player, or if you're second player, it's before deploying fleets. So technically you could say, you know what, I'm putting down the Grav Shift uh, reroute token and the XG7, or the X7G, whatever it's called. <laughs> so you put down both those tokens and you say, aha, now I'm going to throw my interdictor into hyperspace because, again, the timing as a second player is just before deploying fleets, you determine the timing. So you say the first thing you're going to do is you're going to throw those interdictor tokens out specific for those cards, and then you put your ship in hyperspace. Well, you kind of just negated the whole purpose of why you brought your cards. Because um, when a ship is in hyperspace, and now I want to read the fact for hyperspace assault, it says, ships and squadrons set aside are not in play. Their abilities and upgrades are inactive and they cannot be affected by any abilities. When a squadron that was set aside is deployed, it set its activation slider to display the same color as the initiative token. During setup, if the second player must deploy a squadron but cannot because they have no ships in play area, their squadrons that are not set aside are destroyed. <laughs> I mean, we'll get into that. The second player cannot move objective tokens at the start of the first round. If a player has no ships in play, their ships and squadrons that are set aside are destroyed. If the game goes to time or at the end of the sixth round, their ships and squadrons that are set aside are destroyed. I Meaning, if you never pull that ship or squadron out of hyperspace, they blow themselves up in hyperspace. They, they run into a planet or something. So again, as it mentions there... Uh, it says that there any ships set aside, their abilities and upgrades are inactive and no longer affect you know, are able to be affected by any abilities, nor are they then able to use any of their abilities. Meaning that the interdictor, you could put the tokens down, but then you throw it in the hyperspace, and then guess what? The timing of these cards are essentially either during active play or after deploying fleets. Okay, so if the interdictor that's been put in hyperspace or graph shift reroute, this card specifically equipped to that one, he would not be able to trigger that effect. Obviously, if you're running like two interdictors, if the other interdictor, you know, he wouldn't be able to have this card again, he had the one, so he wouldn't be able to trigger the, the effect. But something like the G7X, so as long as you do have an interdictor in play, um, he could, you could, because it's not a unique title, so both interdictors could each have one and each have their tokens down, and you only need one interdictor in play. You can trigger both those abilities. That is in the Erita if you go view my other 
you know, Star Wars Armada explained for these cards. But again, for the most part, you don't want to put your ships into hyperspace that require their abilities to be triggered from them not being out of the play area. Let's look at some other examples. Hopefully I covered these experimental retrofit cards in, in enough detail. Uh, let's look at Captain Nita. And uh, again, what does his card say? Well, his timing is at the start of the first round. You may replace one of your defensive tokens with the evaded defense token. Again, if your ship is in hyperspace, you, you've skipped over that at the start of the first round. Because your ship is in hyperspace, None of your tr card effects can trigger. Nothing can affect it. It can't affect anything else. You've negated Captain Nita. Same thing with the with the MC80 Liberty Title Endeavor. At the start of the first round, gain one contained defense token. Again, your ship is in hyperspace. Can't trigger it. Can't use it. Same thing with Admiral Titus, for example. At the start of the first round, you may change one enemy ship by, by one speed again. If he's in hyperspace, doesn't trigger, can't affect anything... Same thing with fleet commands. You can't trigger any fleet commands if your ship's in hyperspace because, again, it's not able to affect anything. Uh, same thing with, like, <coughs> excuse me, like, bail and price. Again, what are their timing on their triggers? It's after deploying fleets. So, again, if your ships are in hyperspace, they're not technically able to, to utilize these cards because, again, they're not in play. Um, so you've negated the point costs. You know the, the reason why you brought these cards is, and if they're in hyperspace, you no longer can use them. You can't trigger their abilities; they're now worthless. Same thing with Hondo Anaka. You can't use Hondo Anaka if a ship is in hyperspace. Once a ship comes out of hyperspace, you then can utilize this card, but not before then. And what are some other cards? There's there's one big card too, Grand Admiral Thrawn. What's his timing? So his timing for being able to put out his command dials, it's again after deploying fleet. So if you have his ship in hyperspace, um, you, you've you spent 32 points on nothing. Because <laughs> his, his ship's in hyperspace, you can't trigger him for his command dials, and uh, you've, you've wasted all of his potential of what you could have with him. Um, now let's get to the big one. Let's get to the big blue fish himself, Admiral Radis. And this is the one that's required like a ton of changes and car texts and things like that. Um, so what happens if you, de before deploying fleets, because again the timing is the same, let's say you, you set aside uh, Admiral, you set aside the MC-80 here, and Admiral Radis is on this uh, CR-90. And then you do hyperspace assault and you set him aside. Let's say if those are the only two ships Admiral Radis has. Congratulations, you played yourself. You have now technically lost. Because <laughs> you no longer have any ships in the play area. Everything is in hyperspace. Um, and if even if you did have squadrons, uh, again, there's nothing that the squadrons can deploy off of. You can't deploy them. They're all immediately destroyed. Again, everything is destroyed. You've, you've played yourself. <laughs> So don't do that. You know, you for Admiral Radis, you always have to have at least one ship in play. And now you can, for example, we'll say that uh, you know you have two of these Liberties here, and you have Radis on a uh, CR90. So we'll say that um, you know you have the one CR90 in play, and you're Radising another the the one of the Liberties, and you're putting Radis in the CR90 into the hyperspace assault for the card. Okay, so remember. If Radis is in hyperspace on the hyperspace assault card, you cannot trigger his ability. Okay, some players were playing it to where oh Radis is in the, the yellow hyperspace and I move him up, but now I'm gonna trigger his ability to drop this CR ninety and then I trigger at the end of the other round to drop the CR ninety you can't do that. Okay. Um, now you could do it in reverse order. You could say, you know what, at the end or the start of the second round, I'm putting down Radis's ship, and then I'm triggering Radis to then put down this other ship. You can do it in at order. You can't do it in reverse order, because again, if Radis is not in play with his commander card, you can't trigger his ability. Um, and there's a ton more funkiness that can go in with that, but for the most part, that explains about 95% of the complications with the Bluefish, uh, with hyperspace assault. Um, again, if you feel like anything is an error or if I got anything wrong, please be sure to let me know in the comments. My goal is only to ensure that I'm explaining everything as to the best of my ability as I can, especially after discussing it with, uh, with tournament organizers and regionals and worlds and nationals. Um, that's Star Wars Armada Explained, and I'll see you guys in some future videos. Thanks for watching.